One of my favorite characters in the film is the character of Suko. Who is a young, great ape who goes on a journey with Kong. We see Kong really take this young ape as his surrogate son. Is that a mini Kong? Yeah, this is Baby Yoda, but it's like if Baby Yoda is gonna bite your face off. <laughs> The idea of this film came from the concept of doing a Son of Kong movie. And so that's what was always in the back of my head as I was developing this. It's like, okay, there's gonna be a Sun character, but how do you get there with Kong? And what would this character be like? The only thing that I knew going into the development of him is I knew that he needed to have really big, cute eyes. And I wanted to figure out, like, can we do something that's both cute and tough at the same time? From the beginning with Suko, Adam wanted a titan that, while cute, really had his own attitude and sneaky, fun, curious way about things. And Adam actually watched a bunch of documentaries and footage looking at young apes, really trying to imbibe that character with something enduring for the audience and slowly draw Kong in so that they become fast friends. The design started with the art department and they came up with a character that uh, was a very cute uh, juvenile. But we took it over in visual effects to make him a little bit more anatomically correct. Suko looks like this little cute creature, which actually Kong is amazed to find. Well, it turned out that he's not that nice. <laughs> Suko has been used as a bait to capture Kong. The idea of Kong using Suko as a weapon was something that VFX supervisor Alessandro uh, came up with. And that was a very hard scene to sell. The studio was a little bit, ah, I don't know, we can hurt Suko. So I said, no, but listen, I'm gonna add a shot, I'm gonna show that it's not hurt. That's what they did, right? So I had the shot, the Suko's recovering, still peace, right? So you know that it hasn't been hurt. At the end of that battle, Kong and Suko come to a very uneasy truce and have to go off together as, as Kong tries to get Suko to show him where he came from, where the rest of these apes are. Because Suko has grown up in a very dangerous environment as part of this ape army, he definitely doesn't trust other apes. He sees Kong as nothing but a threat and a potential invader. Suko was just trying to fit in. He's part of the Scar King crew and then he tried to lure Kong into a lake where he knows there is a creature, so he's still like trying to show I'm part of the Scar King crew. At first, it's a very difficult relationship between the two of them. Suko hasn't learned to trust other apes. And Kong has been on his own for a very long time, so suddenly he now has this young teenager he's effectively having to take care of. Suko starts to have this friendship slash captive hostage kind of relationship with Kong and brings him back to the tribe. Suko starts to understand that Kong is a good guy. We see a transformation in Suko's personality. It's been very challenging because our monster they don't talk, so a lot of this emotion has to come from the body language and the facial expression. So there's some really fun, heartwarming moments as that relationship comes together and it crescendos to a really great place where we see Suko come into his own. Suko comes to learn from Kong that there is another way, that one doesn't have to rule by fear, that, that kindness and empathy can go a long way. We intentionally did this moment where he beat on his chest to emulate Kong because Kong's become his adopting that. 
I think it's a great relationship in that you have this little titan who's just constantly going to be getting Kong into trouble and then hoping Kong can get him out of it, which is kind of their dynamic on this film, the sort of mismatched couple. And I bet that that could take MonsterVerse in some fun places.